How crazy do I want to sound today? It's good to be hungry. It's good to feel hungry. We have a warped perception on what hunger is. Seriously though, like we don't necessarily know what real hunger feels like. Okay, what we do know is what the contrast of what we're used to feels like, right? Now, that's not to say that I'm like invalidating your like tummy rumbles or the fact that you feel like you're craving something. Like a craving is a completely different situation than being actually hungry. Okay, cravings are going to happen independent of hunger, right? Like you could be a little bit hungry, you could be a lot of bit hungry, you could be fully satiated, but sometimes like a little chocolate truffle sounds good, right? You know, so what I want to discuss is how when we are hungry is when we actually have the best fat loss occurring. And it doesn't mean that we're losing a bunch of muscle and it doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It means that our insulin levels are a little bit lower and our glucagon levels are higher. And I'll explain what that means. After this video, I do want you to check out my friends over at Ujido Matcha Green Tea. This is a really cool matcha tea company. It is relevant to this video because candidly, if you are feeling hungry, sipping on green tea is probably one of the best things that you can do to not add calories, but still get sort of that satiating effect and the liberation of fats out of the tissue and all that fun stuff. But the fact of the matter is, Ujido is a true Japanese 187 year old matcha company. So the matcha tea leaves are grown in the shade where they should, okay, and it's harvested the proper way, okay, and then you have it pulverized into a very fine dust that can literally mix with cold water. You could put it in a water bottle, straight up matcha, okay? So really cool. Plus they have these on the go stick packs, so just check them out. There's a special link down below. They've been a supporter on this channel for three years now, and I love them and I appreciate them so much. So check them out down below in the description after this video. So I have talked about this quite a few times, but I needed to put it in a very clear video, okay? The period between your meals when you are hungry is when you are having maximum fat loss occur. There is subjective hunger and there is like real hunger and then there is starving, okay? I can't speak out of turn, but I can make an assumption that most of us don't know what it feels like to sincerely be starving, okay? We may say, oh, I'm starving, but you're not starving. Most of us have enough fat tissue on us to really be able to be hungry, but not necessarily starving, okay? When we are just hungry, when we feel like we want to eat, that is when our glucagon levels are generally at their highest. And how do I know that? Because glucagon goes up when insulin goes down. And the longer that we are without food or the longer that in a lot of cases without carbohydrates, our insulin levels go lower and our glucagon operates in the opposite of that. But it also coincides with the peak of ghrelin. Ghrelin is the hunger hormone. And it doesn't mean just because your ghrelin levels are high that you have to eat. Your ghrelin signaling is a signal to your brain to eat because you're adjusted to eating. Just because your ghrelin levels are high is not a survival demand to eat. It is a signal because you're hungry, not because you're starving. Big difference between hunger and starving, okay? So when your ghrelin levels are high, coincidentally, so is your glucagon. And you know what glucagon does? Glucagon stimulates the release of fats from the tissue. Glucagon also stimulates hormone sensitive lipase, which is what allows fats to actually be utilized and burnt. Once those fats are liberated into the bloodstream, then the free fatty acids separate from the glycerol backbone and you have fats that be used as fuel. When those fats are used as fuel, suddenly your ghrelin signaling comes back down because now your cells are no longer hungry. Because now, even though your stomach might be hungry, your cells are satiated because your cells, which were demanding the fuel in the first place, got their fuel. Where did they get your fuel or their fuel? From your stored body fat that got liberated. So they are fed, they are satiated. So they say, all right, cool, no more signaling, no more signaling. At that point, if you are still hungry, it is more than likely your brain. Now, that being said, how do you know that you really do need to eat? 
There is a difference between being hungry and in that optimal fat burning state. When I get hungry, I go for a run. When I get hungry, I do some push-ups because I'm like, I want to capitalize on this. But there is a difference between that and going like hypoglycemic when you feel ridiculously lightheaded. However, there's some interesting evidence that demonstrates in some studies that a lot of times that lightheadedness is placebo effect. Like we, it's psychosomatic, we create it. And when you take subjects that, you know, anyway, it's interesting. Point is, is that when you start feeling foggy, when you start feeling literally lightheaded, or when you actually feel weak, then it's a different situation. But I'm kind of hungry right now. When I'm hungry, my brain works better. Well, because when you're a little bit hungry, when ghrelin is elevated, when glucagon is elevated, you have that release of fatty acids into your bloodstream, and you also have the reallocation of glucose to the brain. That reallocation of glucose to the brain makes you more alert. So when next time you're hungry, take a look at yourself and realize, wait a minute, do I actually feel really sharp right now? Because I'm hungry right now, but I feel sharp because a lot of glucose is being shunted to my brain because my cells are being fed fats that have been liberated from my tissue. So don't be afraid of hunger. I ask my clients when I work with them, when are you most hungry? And they always think that it's an implication to say, I want you to eat during this time. But it's actually the opposite. I ask my clients, when are you the most hungry? Say, oh, I don't know, around like 11 a.m. or around 3 p.m. Cool. Now I want you to eat a little bit earlier so that you're even more hungry at that time. And I want you to go for a little walk during that time. Because that's how we're going to capitalize on the fact that you are hungry. The walk is going to satiate you but it's gonna satiate you because now the fats that you've liberated have to go to the cell to create energy and the cell can say, oh, thanks for the fat. I'm totally fine now. Anyway, see you tomorrow.